The Reserve Bank's rate rise today of a quarter of a percent to 4.1% will not be missed by the big banks and all households with a mortgage and our tens of thousands of dollars a year worse off. And that's going to get even more painful. Sally Tyndall is the Research Director with the Interest Rate Monitoring Business Rate City and joins me now. Sally, thanks for your time. Uh, any indication from any of the banks at this stage as to which way they might be going? Whisper quiet, Ross. I think we'll uh, be engaged in another game of chicken for a while now with the big banks trying to work out who's going to break the bad news first. But, you know, if past record is anything to go by and we've already had 11 hikes to draw from, the banks are going to pass it on and in full in about 10 days' time. You know, uh, for the average borrower that will see on a $500,000 loan, that will see their monthly repayment increase by $76. But as you and I both know, that's not the whole picture here. In total, that borrower with $500,000 loan, that's, you know, not a huge loan in Sydney or Melbourne terms, they're seeing their monthly repayments rise in total by $1,134 across those 12 hikes. A million-dollar loan, well, which is a bit more common in Sydney and Melbourne, for example, $2,269. Uh, $2, uh, look, these are big bucks that we're talking yeah. about because month well, after month, post-tax well, just dollars. Well, just think about that, Sally. After tax dollars, as you say, that million dollar loan, that's now an extra $26,000 after tax that that family has got to find. So that's where the bite really does come on, which is why the savings are being depleted. But the interesting thing is that you and I have talked about this. The banks have actually set aside their cashback uh, programs. For people going in, getting a new loan, all of a sudden they'd give you money. Now they've stopped all of this because it seems they're trying to take a bit of the heat out of their mortgage portfolios. Why are they doing that? What impact will that have on the rate decisions they make over these next days or so? That's right, Ross. They are furiously trying to take the churn out of the market. They say that they're focusing on their existing customers more than attracting new ones. ANZ would be the exception here. They've said they're still in the fight and they still do have their cash back on the table at this point in time. Uh, look, so, yes, the big four banks are stepping back from the game. That does not mean people should should not refinance. There are still plenty of lenders out there that are willing to offer them a lower rate and potentially some cash back on the way through if they switch over. It's just that customers may start to have to look beyond the big four banks, something that Australians typically don't like to do. Well over 70% of the loan book is still sitting with the big four banks. That may change, uh, you know, in the months ahead. Although if the big banks start bleeding excessively to smaller lenders, you might find they change their Tune. Yeah, it could be too. So what's the difference between the top rack rate and the bottom rack rate between the big banks and those smaller lenders? Look, so after this rate hike filters through and assuming they pass it on in full, uh, all four big banks will have their lowest ongoing variable rate will be above six. The exception here is Westpac because they've got a two-year introductory rate. That is likely to be just below six, but most of the big banks' lowest variable rates will be above six now. Uh, but a cracking rate and we think around nine lenders may still hold on to this, will be under 5.5%. So there's plenty of room between the big banks and the smaller lenders. Some are even throwing in cash back still. But it's interesting for perspective, just to throw your mind back 18 months, when most borrowers in Australia had a one in front of their mortgage. What you're saying to me now is all of the big banks have got a six in front of their mortgage. Oh, and complacent borrowers could very well have a seven in front of their mortgage. These are unprecedented times. I think that, you know, a lot of borrowers who set out on this journey of owning a home didn't ever think that they would see rates that high in their lifetime, let alone in the space of just over a year. And yet here we are, rates uh, that start with a six are the norm now, uh, and we are on a fast train towards seven with the RBA uh, indicating that more ha hikes might be necessary. And just a quick one for you before we go, is there a big enough pool of money for some of these smaller lenders to be able to still be competitive with their lower rates and still have a margin? Because that's a, a part of the issue. I know when I borrow money from a, a, a lender that I'm the risk, not them. But not, notwithstanding all of that, they've still got to be able to be viable as a lender to be able to put out those competitive loans. 
And it's been really interesting to see the shift in the market there, Ross, because, you know, a year ago we saw some of those non-bank lenders really at the forefront of the fight uh, offering the lowest rates. That's changed quite significantly now. It's smaller banks with access to deposits because the cost of funding has gone through the roof for those non-bank lenders. And we've seen, you know, at least one of them in nano fall over as a result of this soaring cost of funding. And so, uh, yes, I still think that there is room for them to be competitive. I think that they can, you know, especially if they start to see growth in their home loan book. Uh, but it will be interesting to see how some of the non-bank lenders weather this storm. So true. Sally Tyndall, thanks for your time today. Much appreciated.